Okay, so let me ask, what does the United States, Liberia, and Myanmar have in common? Well, these are really the only three nations that have yet to fully embrace the metric system. Here in the United States, there are certain areas within our maybe government and society that have gone metric. But in everyday life, we still kind of hold on to the English measuring system or the imperial measuring system. So this video is going to talk about, you know, just what the metric system is. So let me first ask you, do you need a calculator to answer the following questions? And if you look at these questions, I hope you realize, no, you shouldn't. Look at the first one, 5 times 1,000. You see the three zeros on the 1,000, just put them after the 5 and you got your answer. Look at the next one. See the 10? There's only one zero on the 10, so put that one zero at the end of 375 and you get 3,750. Well, what about the next one? 625 divided by 100. I hope you see all you have to do is move the decimal point and you get 6.25. And then finally, the last one, the 1,000. There's three zeros in a 1,000. 1, so we just move the decimal point three places and you get 0 0.046. If you can do these problems without a calculator, and you should, then uh, you, can, you can do the metric system. It's really this simple. So let's get started. So first of all, here's the metric scale, and well, here's a portion of the metric scale, and I want to mention that the metric system is really based on factors of 10. So I'll talk about what I mean by the basic unit in a moment, but what's 10 times bigger than 1? Well, that would be 10. What's 10 times bigger than 10? That would be 100. What's 10 times bigger than 100? that would be 1,000. I hope you see what I mean by the metric system is based on factors of 10. Well, let's go the opposite direction on the scale. What's 10 times smaller than 1? That would be a tenth or 0.1. Well, what's 10 times smaller than a tenth? That would be a hundredth or 0 0.01. Well, what's 10 times smaller than that? That would be a thousandth or 0 0.001. Notice again the metric system is based on factors of 10. And so let's start looking at um, the length. If you're going to measure the length of something, the distance from one point to another point, you're measuring how long something is. Let's talk about that. So first of all, the basic unit of measuring length in the metric system is going to be built around something called a meter. So let me change. Notice how my scale has changed. The basic unit is now labeled one meter. Well, what's 10 meters? that would be a decameter. What's a hundred meters? That would be a hectometer. What's a thousand meters? That would be a kilometer. Go the opposite direction on the scale. What's a tenth of a meter? That would be a decimeter. What's a hundredth of a meter? That would be a centimeter. And what's a thousandth of a meter? That would be a millimeter. And so you might be used to measuring things in feet, uh, feet and yards and inches and miles. These are not metric. I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, certain areas of the United States have gone metric, but mainly our culture is still built around the imperial metric, uh, excuse me, the imperial measuring system. And so feet, yards, inches, miles, these are part of the imperial or, or the English measuring system. So if I were to if I were to measure the distance between these two cities, maybe Los Angeles City A and Chicago, Illinois City B, I'd probably want to use a big measuring device because there's a big distance between these two cities. So I'm going to use probably kilometers to measure. And I actually looked this up on Google Maps and it comes to approximately 3,200 kilometers between Chicago and Los Angeles. So I'd want to use a big measuring stick. But if I'm measuring something smaller, like a tree, now a tree might only be 15, 20 feet tall, depending on the species of a tree. So I'm not going to use a kilometer to measure a tree. It's like I'm not going to use a mile to measure the height of a tree. I want something smaller. In this case, I'd probably just use a meter. And this tree may very well only be, you know, seven or eight meters tall, depending upon the species of the tree. Okay, well, here's a practice problem. Pretend an object is two meters tall. If I were to ask you to convert that, how many centimeters is that? 
Well, this is where the beauty of the metric system, I hope, is on display. All I have to do is move the decimal point. Notice in the scale, centimeters is two places to the right. So if I move the decimal point one place to the right, I can say two meters is the same thing as 20 decimeters. But if I move the decimal point another place to the right, then I can say two meters is the same thing as 200 centimeters, and I've got my answer. I don't need a calculator. I'm just moving decimal points. Here's another one. Pretend an object is 475 millimeters tall. How many meters would that be? How many meters? You can see I have to move the decimal to the left. If I move the decimal one place to the left, I would have 47.5 centimeters. If I move the decimal point another place to the left, I would have 4.75 decimeters. So I have to move the decimal point one more place to the left, and I have 0.475 meters. That's my answer. You see, all I'm doing is moving a decimal point left or right, depending on the problem I'm trying to solve. Okay, so I've kind of reset my scale here. Now, a moment ago we were measuring in meters, but that's because we were measuring the length of something. What if I'm trying to measure the mass? How much matter an object has? You know, measure its weight. Well, its mass. And then I'd want to use uh, the basic unit would be a gram. So watch how my scale changes. The basic unit of mass is a gram. So 10, uh, 10 grams would be a decagram. 100 grams would be a hectogram. 1,000 grams would be a kilogram. Move to the other side of the scale. A tenth of a gram would be a decigram. A hundredth of a gram would be a centigram. And a thousandth of a gram would be a milligram. Now, you might be used to measuring things in pounds and tons and ounces, but these aren't metric. Again, these are part of the imperial measuring system. And you might be more familiar with these if you've grown up here in the United States, but these are not metric. So what if we're trying to measure how heavy an automobile is? Well, automobiles are pretty heavy. I'm going to want to use a big measuring device. I'd probably choose a kilogram to measure the weight of an automobile. But what if I was taking a medicine pill? Uh, let's say I had a sickness and I was taking a medicine pill to try to get better. Well, medicine pills are often measured in milligrams. A medicine pill is not very big, so I don't need a big measuring device. I'm going to choose the measuring unit that is best in this situation. Well, let's do a practice problem. Pretend an object weighs 500 grams. If I were to ask you how many hectograms that is, Again, here you can see the full beauty of the metric system. It's really based on powers of 10, factors of 10, and so I'm just moving decimal points. If I move the decimal point one place to the left, I would have 50 decagrams. But if I move the decimal point another place to the left, I would have 5 hectograms. So 500 grams is the same thing as 5 hectograms. It's really that straightforward. Well, notice I've reset the scale, so let's look at the next basic unit. What if I'm measuring volume, the amount of space that an object occupies? Well, in that case, the basic unit will be a liter. So watch how the scale changes. The basic unit is a liter. So 10 liters would be a decaliter. 100 liters would be a hectoliter. 1,000 liters would be a kiloliter. Move to the other side now. A tenth of a liter would be a deciliter. A hundredth of a liter would be a centiliter. And a thousandth of a liter would be a milliliter. Now you might be used to measuring things in gallons and quarts and cups and teaspoons and tablespoons. Again, these are not metric. These are part of the English measuring system or the imperial measuring system. But these are not metrics. So we're not going to be using these. If I was trying to measure how much water was in the swimming pool, you know a swimming pool can hold a lot of water, so I want to use a big measuring unit, such as a kiloliter. If I wanted to know how much air is in this hot air balloon, you know this hot air balloon can probably hold a whole lot of air, I'd probably also choose kiloliters. But in biology class, you know, we often measure things in, uh, in milliliters, small amount of volumes with a graduated cylinder as we're doing various labs and experiments. And so I'd probably use a graduated cylinder to measure some, a small amount of liquid in, in milliliters. 
Now, if we do a practice problem, pretend a container holds 15 deciliters of, it, of water. Well, how many centiliters is this? Again, you can see the beauty of the metric system. I just have to move the decimal point. If I move the decimal point one place to the right, I would have 150 liters. If I move it another place to the right, I would have 1,500 deciliters. And so if I move the decimal point one more place to the right, I would have 15,000 centiliters. That's my final answer. You notice all I did was move a decimal point. No need for a calculator. So let's do a few practice problems before we're done. Which metric unit would be best for measuring the mass of this bulldozer? You know, pause the video, think about it from these choices. Uh, when you're ready, hit the play button. I'm gonna go over the answer in three, two, one. So first of all, let's cross off tons. Tons is not a metric unit. Tons is one of those imperial units. Now, I'm gonna cross off kiloliters next because kiloliters measures volume. Anything in liters measures volume, and we're not trying to measure volume, we're trying to measure the mass. I can now cross off centimeters, because any kind of meter is gonna measure distance. I'm not trying to measure the distance of this bulldozer, I'm trying to measure how heavy or its mass. And so now I've got my last two choices. Notice how uh, one choice is just a gram and one choice is a kilogram. Well, bulldozer is really heavy, so I'm going to want to choose a big measuring device. So a gram is just too small. I could measure this bulldozer in grams, but my answer is going to be a really, really, really big number. So let me use a big measuring device, a kilogram. So here's a practice problem right now. Pause the video, try to answer the, uh, the question, and, and then hit the play button when you're ready. I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, one. Okay, well, here's the metric scale in case you needed it. And if I know 8.4 hectometers and I'm trying to turn it into kilometers, notice how it's only one place away. If I move the decimal one, point, uh, one decimal place to the left, I would have my answer of 0.84. And that's the beauty of the metric system. We're just moving decimal points. Now, this is not a metric problem. This is kind of an analogy first. So which of these is most valuable? 10, or excuse me, 12 dimes, 12 dimes, 20 nickels, or three quarters. Now, if you're not used to American currency, then this is probably a hard problem, but if you are used to American currency, you might know, well, let's turn these all into dollars. 12 dimes is the same thing as a dollar 20. 20 nickels is the same thing as one dollar. And three quarters is the same thing as 75 cents or 0.75 dollars. And so now that they've all been turned into the same unit, they're all now labeled in dollars, you can see that the dimes were the most valuable. So why am I giving you this problem? Because this is an analogy to the next one. So look at this practice problem. Which of these three numbers is the largest? Try to answer it. Pause the video, hit the play button when you're ready to check your answer. I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, one. Well, I hope you see why I used that money example from a moment ago. Because right now, one of these numbers is in kilograms, one's in grams, and one's in centigrams. So let's make them all the same unit. So here's my metric scale, if, if you want to refer to this. Let's make them all grams. Now, the middle one is already in grams, 775 grams. But if I turn 0.8 kilograms into grams, that would be 800 grams. The bottom one, 1,225 centigrams, if I turn that into grams, if I convert that, it would be 12.25 grams. So now that all three numbers are in the same unit of gram, I can see that the 0 0.8 kilogram was the biggest of the three numbers that I gave you, even though it might not have looked the biggest. 0 0.8 looks like a small number, but kilogram, kilo is a big measuring unit. So as we wrap up this video, if you're in my class, you know, maybe hit the pause button and try to answer these questions on a separate sheet of paper. I'd be happy to check your answer. Uh, and I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.